three. Hello everyone, welcome back to my amazing show. Today I have another superstar guest. I have Adam Gillian, who was probably most well known for Beautiful, the Carol King musical. And that's, you've done that quite recently, haven't you? Yeah, so I was on the, uh, in the UK and Ireland tour um, that kicked off in January in Bromley. And uh, unfortunately, because of what's happening, it was cut short uh, in March. So our last, um, I think our last show was in Cardiff, uh, which was, I mean, to be honest, it was a great, um, it was a great venue to, uh, to finish in because it was, it was massive and beautiful. Um, like the show. But um, yeah, so I think that was in, I mean, it was the week before everything went dark. So I guess it was like the third week of March or something. Um, so yeah, we were, we were, unfortunately we only had like a three month stint. Uh, we were supposed to go until September, but here we are. So are there any plans to go back to it afterwards or is it done now? Uh, not as far as I know. Uh, I We haven't been told about any plans to reschedule or anything. Um, so they, I mean, they might do, and well, they haven't told us, I don't know, but as far as any of us are aware, it, it's kind of, it's kind of done. So was that a hard thing knowing that it had been cut short or do you just, I guess, did you just realise that it was happening for one and just be glad that you got to at least start it? Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, it was tough. Um, it was tough as well because it was so, abrupt as well it was you know we finished on Saturday and then that that was it that was the last time that I saw any of my colleagues any any of the cast any of the crew anybody uh and I haven't seen them since <laughs> do you know what I mean so apart from like FaceTimes and stuff but I haven't seen them since then so uh, yeah it, it was kind of tough um to be honest uh you know we I had a lot of fun playing the, the role of Jerry. Um, we had a lot of fun, you know, backstage as well as on stage. Uh, and I just kind of miss everybody. Um, but it, it was one of those things that I got, like, I let myself be upset about it. But it, it's because it was affecting everybody globally on a massive scale. It just felt like any of my worries or any of my upset was kind of shadowed by, you know, the, the the more grave uh, issues that were going on, i.e. like, you know, a massively deadly virus ravaging across the world. So I think, um, yeah, it, it was it was upsetting, but uh, it I, I was able to gain some perspective very quickly afterwards. So, yeah, it was it was tricky, but it is what it is kind of thing, you know. So was it a hard process getting the part in that show um yeah 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 i guess so uh i mean any any audition process is quite tricky because uh i'm usually fairly relaxed when it comes to like first because there's like obviously like different rounds it takes takes a, a quite a few rounds to get to like the finals and stuff of some of something um, I'm usually fairly relaxed nowadays. Uh, I never used to be um, with like first rounds and re like second rounds, um, because you know the likelihood is you won't get it. So you just do your best and you know try and enjoy it. And I think like the closer you get to um, possibly getting the part, the more nervous I get because I'm like, oh, I'm like in the third or fourth round now, and uh, I could definitely like there's potential that I could get this. So like you, the pressure's on. Um, it wasn't like the auditions themselves weren't that tricky, but I very nearly didn't. I'm pretty sure I very nearly didn't get the part because uh, I don't know what happened. I was, I was super prepared, really confident before we, we, I went into the last audition, which was uh, in front of the American producers and stuff. And they were filming it. And uh, I just, I was fine, totally fine. And then they opened the door and said, okay, this is Adam. And I walked in and just went, <laughs> I'm just like super nervous. Uh, went in, don't think I did a very good job at all. Uh, so I left, I was like, that's it. I've, I've, uh, I've scuppered my opportunity here. And then the next day they said, they want, they want you to come back and, and redo your 
like filming. So they gave me they gave me another chance, which was good, um, which I don't think happens very often. But it was very kind of them because I went in. It was just the American producers weren't there. It was just the camera and like the people I'd been working with before the director uh, and the casting director and stuff. And they were a lot more relaxed and chill. Um, so I think they realised that I just got really nervous and bottled it on my, on the Wednesday, and then by the Friday they were like, "You can you can do it again," which was really nice of them. Uh, so yeah, it was tricky to get the part um, based on that alone, I think. Um, but yeah, it, but I mean, it was a really nice team um, to audition for and the the casting director, Jill Green, is really, she's really nice in her room. She just, she wants you to get it. You know, she wants you to do your best. Um, so she's, she's really supportive. Um, so yeah. So how did you feel when you got the part? Was it a phone call you got that you, what were you doing when you got? Uh, I was actually. I was. What were you doing when you got phone call? Yeah, so I was in. Um, I was in Germany filming something, and uh, I got a call um, from my agent, and I kind of knew that it would be around that time that I would hear anything. Um, and I kind of thought, like my only previous, um, apart from doing uh, something called Refresh um, for Riker Creative. Uh, the only other like professional stage uh, job that I had was Hades Town um, at the National, so uh, I didn't I didn't think I would get it because um, it was like a, a lead role or supporting lead role or whatever the terminology you want to use um, in a show. I thought they would be like, okay, well you know he can do it maybe, but like we should just we should give him like first cover ensemble or something. Um, but they called and said they they want they my agent phone me and just said they've offered you Jerry and I was like no way <laughs> I just, I didn't believe it because I was like I did such a really bad final audition it was it was terrible um, but yeah it, it felt uh, I felt like that that's insane this is gonna be such a good experience uh, I just I just didn't think I would ever get a part like that um, so yeah it, it was. I was elated and, sh and shocked, surprised, and also like really nervous. I was like, oh no, like I'm going to be working with like this person and this person who are super experienced and like I'm, they're going to be like, <laughs> I just go that like suit, like imposter syndrome, like, oh no, they're going to think that I'm really terrible and <laughs> like, they're going to, I'm going to get to the rehearsals and the director's like, oh yeah, why did we ever hire you? You're terrible. Like I get that all the time. So yeah, it was yeah, it was really cool to get, um, especially when I thought I definitely didn't have a chance of getting it. So yeah, it was it was a cool feeling. So you said that the the other stage show you did was Hades Town, and how long did you do Hades Town for? How long was your run in that show? Um, so Hades Town was uh, I started rehearsing in. September, end of September, start of October. Uh, and because like shows at the National only do like three or four month runs, it was only until the end of January. Um, so I was in rehearsals for like a month and then it opened previews at the start of November uh, and finished at the end of January and then it transferred to Broadway. So yeah, it was a, that was a really cool experience. Amazing. So um, before that, you worked on a BBC show called Council. Yes, I did. Uh, how was that? Like, uh, that must have been exciting when someone said you, you're going to be on the BBC show. How did you react to that news? Uh, again, that was that was my first uh, that was my first ever like acting job. <laughs> um, that was through like a you know a casting process and whatever. Um, it yeah, it was weird. It was it was, oh I so it was a it was a BBC and I, um, show, like a one off special, uh, and uh, I flew back to Belfast because I was I'm living in London. Well, I'm in Belfast now, but I was living in London. Flew back to Belfast. I just auditioned for it after I did a self tape for it, uh, and then didn't think to get it which is which is what i always think i'm like i'll do the self-tape i'll do my best but i probably won't get it 
And then they were like, oh, can you come back? Can you fly to Belfast for like, a chemistry read? Now, a chemistry read is whenever you have to, you know, read opposite the other actor who's going who's gonna to play the other role to see if you have any kind of like, well, chemistry. But I didn't know, I didn't know what that was. <laughs> I had no idea what a chemistry read was until I got there. Um, so yeah, I learned on the job. So I did that and like most auditions, like they're like, okay, thank you. And then you leave and you're like, well, they hated it. Uh, and then I was working like a promo job in Waterloo Station in London. And my agent phoned me and said that they, they wanted me to do it, which was ins like insane because not only was that my first ever acting job, it was going to be like a BBC job back home and it was going to be great and stuff. And it was like a, a lead part, which was great. Um, Cause I, that was after a couple of years of not really <laughs> getting any jobs. <laughs> so It was a feeling of like relief that I could finally, even if that was the only job I ever got, I, it was like a fighting, like this feeling of relief that I was like, Oh, okay. Well the past couple of years of like grinding away in London hasn't been for nothing. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that was a really cool experience. Um, I definitely didn't know entirely what I was doing, but I did my best. Um, and yeah, it uh, unfortunately it's not on iPlayer anymore. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really, really great experience. Really cool. Um, if for anyone who didn't see it, which is probably most people, uh, I was playing an 18 year old schoolboy uh, who, but it mainly followed uh, this um, barrister uh, in Northern Ireland who uh, has an affair with a young client, which was me. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was cool. And it was also like a 15 day shoot that we did in 10 days. So it was pretty intense. It was like one day I was shooting a scene that was super emotional in the morning. And then at night time I was like doing a scene where I was having to be super flirty and like it ended up in having like a, a bedroom scene you know so it's just a bit like all over the place but it was cool yeah it was it was really fun great experience amazing so before the interview started i asked you to think about a question so you answered the question and the question was if you could be in any musical for one night only with any like with, with lights sound and costume and there was no gender roles or anything or age roles which musical which character and why uh wow okay I thought I thought about it a bit, and I was like, "Oh, I don't know." I think I'd love to play. Uh, oh, the character name is gone now. Who the um, who's the who's the prima donna in Phantom of the Opera? Oh, I can't remember. Carlotta, Carlotta. Uh, I think that would be so much fun. I mean, I can't sing operatically at all. Um, but I think that would be a lot of fun. Like the, the dresses that she wears, the wigs that she wears, like everything would be incredible. And I like Phantom is definitely one of my favorite shows um, when it's done well. I think I've, I've seen, the first time I saw Phantom was the touring production, like in 2012 or 2013 um, in Edinburgh and it was amazing. And then I saw it in West End and it was amazing. And then I saw it in New York as well. And I just didn't, I, it might've just been a bad day or whatever, but I just didn't. I just didn't think it was as good as the ones I'd seen before. Um, but yeah, I definitely think uh, it's definitely up there with some of my top fave shows. But yeah, Carlotta <laughs> in Phantom would be very fun to play, I think. Amazing. So this question you have to think about, so you make sure you don't get confused, because some people get confused with this, and it is, if you had to pick between only listening to one original cast recording for the rest of your life, or listening to any cast recording you want, but only listening to it once and never going back to it, what would you pick? Oh, uh, listening to one original cast recording for the rest of my life. Just one, or? Uh, yeah, well, I thought, is it not like it's just one for the rest of your no, life? So, it's, yeah, so it's just, it's choosing between only listening to one yeah. or listening to any, but only once, never listen to it again. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what? For somebody who does, for somebody who performs in musical theatre, 
I don't listen to a huge amount of musical theatre albums, I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, uh, I think the one that comes to mind is the Spring Awakening original Broadway cast recording. Um, I can listen to that over on repeat over and over again. So I, I would say, yeah, I would say one for the rest, like one recording for the rest of my life. That would probably be it. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, cool. it's a great show. So my next question is, they are making Adam Gillian the musical, Who's Gonna Play You, You Can't Pick Yourself? Uh, oh, can it be like anybody from any kind of genre or does it have to be like musical theatre? Well, I'd say as long as they can sing, because it's you, the musical, so it has to be... <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Okay. Sure. You know <laughs> I'm going to say I would love Cameron Sharp to play me, because he was Barry in Beautiful. <laughs> and I would love to see what his interpretation of me in the musical would be, because he's a, he's a good friend. And I'd love to... See we just took the piss out of each other a lot. I'd love to see, and he's much better singer than me. So I would love to see his interpretation of me in a musical. That would be great. <laughs> so if you're all friends and you're doing a musical based on you, would you play him? <laughs> in the, like the musical based on you, you just play each other, do a role vessel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would do that. I would, I would, yeah, I would write that. I would definitely do that. I would, love, I would. <laughs> If I mean, if if money was a was a was a a difficulty, which it could be after all of this um, pandemic and whatever, but <laughs> I would just multi-role everyone else. <laughs> it's just I would just be everybody else. Cam could be me, and uh, yeah, I, I I think that would be a lot of fun. I think that would be a show that nobody would come and see, and it would be terrible. Um, I think it would be a lot of fun. Yeah, amazing. So. Would you rather never sing, dance, act, any of that stuff, never do that again, or be an all singing, all dancing sheep? Um, but just so you know, you'd turn into a sheep and have knowledge of being a human. You'd have to live in a field and only eat grass. Yeah, do you know what? I, I'm happy being human. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with being acting and acting to stay human. Yeah, because you didn't say writing, and I I can write as well, so I I can just that can be my creative outlet if I can't sing, dance, or act. I mean, I can't dance anyway. I'm just gonna be very clear. I can dance only if it's choreographed for me and after a lot of rehearsal. But I can't, I can't. I, I, dancing is not a thing that I can do anyway. So singing and acting, fine. Uh, yeah, I would have to give those up. I don't think because if you're a sheep and you've known that you've been a human before, then I think you probably wouldn't want to sing, dance, or act because like I'm sure the life of a sheep is great, but I think humans can do much more things, <laughs> many more things than a sheep can. So I think you would probably just be quite sad that you're not a human anymore. <laughs> so I'd, I think I'd rather be a human and not sing, dance, or act. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, last question. Thank you, by the way, for coming on the show. It's been amazing. Not at all, man. This is the question that I finish with everyone, and that is, if you could be any Disney princess, which one would you be and why? Any Disney princess? Um, oh, okay. It's, oh, that's a good one. Disney princess. I, do you know what? I think I would be Mulan. Good choice. And why? Uh, she, I think she just... She just kicks ass. I mean, I think they all kind of do. And they, I think all, they all kick ass in different ways, especially like the more contemporary Disney um, movies that come out. But I think she was the first one that I watched and was like, I love that she just defies the, you know, the male stereotype of only men being able to be warriors. And she's like, no, nah, I, I, can, I can fight as well. I think that's cool. Amazing. Um, and also Mulan's a great film. So, yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm definitely doing that, I think. Cool. Well, thank you for coming on the show. It's been oh, it's fun. I've enjoyed it. Um, enjoy. Two quick things. Uh, what's your advice for everyone stuck at home right now? Uh, just, like, try and stay as busy as you can, but don't be too hard on yourself if, if there's nothing to do 
or uh, if you feel, if you just want to chill out, just chill out. But if you feel like you're getting a bit like groggy or lethargic, maybe just yeah, go for a walk. Try and yeah, don't try not to let yourself just sit in the lethargy too too long. Otherwise, it'll it'll make I think it'll make you quite down. Um, I mean, I I say that a couple of, there's a couple of days where I'm like I just don't want to do anything, and that's fine. That's also fine. Uh, and also, you know, it'll be over hopefully soon so just uh, keep up keep keep the old spirits up you know well you all heard it from the superstars everyone make sure that you um follow the advice and one last thing is this video is trying to make money for acting for others so the link in the description i'm going to put a link to the website as well so that you can all donate below and yeah thank you for coming on the show uh, how do people follow you on social media if they want to Oh, uh, you can follow me. Uh, my Twitter and Instagram is at a j gillian, um, which is G I L L I A N. So many people misspell that. You'll have you have no idea how many people misspell my surname and say it wrong. <laughs> it's Gillian. Right, in the corner of the screen, I think you can see it on the corner of your. Could be on there. So if you want to see it, A J, and then it's Gillian that's start on the screen. So yeah. Cool. Okay. Right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks. Man. Thanks for asking. Um, I think everyone, if you remember the advice I always give you at the end of every.